another noisy day in my noisy neighborhood productions presents I think it's about time we made a video isn't it but before we start with the electronics there's just a couple of things I want to waffle about so if you want to skip over this part I'll put an annotate oh no wait YouTube doesn't have those anymore does it I'll put a timestamp in the description and you can skip over this bit if you want to. Anyway, the Star Kids animated series is on hold at the moment because I still haven't got those lines for episode 5. So in the meantime, I thought I would work on another animated series. Now, this one isn't going to be as good as the Star Kids. In fact, it's going to be a little bit immature humor-wise, you know. It's not going to be anything really bad, you know, it's not going to be like South Park or anything like that. It's... Now, you might have noticed that the pictures don't have any colour in them. I haven't coloured the pictures in because what I intend to do is scan them into the computer and then colour them that way. So it's going to end up looking like this. You know, they're just silly little shorts mostly based on stupid things I came up with as a kid. And I want to make them animated, you know? Anyway, I've already got one of these done, which I'm going to put in at the end of the video. Another thing, I still haven't learned to play guitar yet. Well, I say I haven't learned to play, I mean, I've been... I know a few chords, and I've been working on my picking techniques. So I'm working on making a guitar sound bank. Sampling from that guitar. And this is all the stuff I've done so far. And what I intend to do is make one massive sound bank with all the different articulations and all the noises and everything else I mean this is going to be much better than a lot of those paid VSTs that you can get but I'm going to release this for free there's still a few things that I need to work on still a few things I need to do got a lot of things recorded that still need to be sorted out I mean this this wasn't all from that guitar, there's some other things in there as well. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. We've got legatos, we've got mutes, we've got staccatos. All of this was played by me. I will do a big video on how to use these samples. But for now, I will say that you will need Open Mod Plug Tracker to play these sample banks. So just to give you a couple of examples of how it sounds here, let's just hear it in this song here. Of course, I had to start playing it from where the guitar stopped, so let's just go back a little. So yeah, there's that, but this is still a lot of work to do, so um, so for the last part of the video I'm going to do some electronics and I think I'm going to have to recharge my camera's battery, but I'll just go over a brief go over what I'm going to do. Now, I need to make a power supply for powering op-amp based circuits. Now, even though I've got my homemade power supply here, which can do that, I've got a lot of devices that I use that use op amps and need a split rail supply that I use regularly and I don't want to have to keep using, you know, 
and my power supply tied up doing all that, so making a separate power supply for them is what I'm going to do in this video, you know, plus 12 volts, zero, and negative 12 volts. Um, for instance, my guitar amp, my guitar preamp, uses an op amp, although I've put a little power supply in there, a little sort of switch mode charge pump supply that converts a single rail supply to split rail, so you get the, you know, plus, minus, and zero, but, you know, it puts a little bit of noise into the circuit, so I want to make a linear supply. Also, my microphone preamp here also needs a, you know, split rail supply, so I can power both of those off. Well, I better clean up this desk and charge up my camera's battery. Okay, so if I'm going to build a power supply, first thing we're going to need is a transformer. Now, this is that one where one of the leads had been, um, had broken, so I've just soldered a couple of new, fresh new wires on there. So, let's plug this transformer in and let's see what we get out of it. Okay, our transformer is on. I've got to be very careful here because we do have full mains voltage going in, which here is 247 volts. It's a little bit high, but that's not really going to matter. What does matter is that we need a center tapped transformer, and that's what this is. So, between here and here, we have 4.58 volts. That's that doesn't seem right, it should be much higher than that. There we go, we've got 25 volts between there and there. Between here and here we have about 12.7, and between here and here we should have about the same, and we do. So this is our secondary winding. And the one on the end there is our center tap. Usually it's in the middle, but for some reason on this transformer they did it that way. I don't know why, but... So, we need to convert that from AC to DC with a full bridge rectifier. There we go. Our rectifier is connected. So we just need to put a couple of capacitors on and we'll have a DC supply. And here we are. High voltage AC goes in here. Low voltage AC comes out here, and then DC comes out here. So I've got my meter hooked up, making sure nothing is shorting out anywhere. It looks good. So let's plug it in. And yeah, of course I've got my meter the wrong way around, but looking good so far. Okay, let's just unplug. Now let's connect my zero to the center. Or my let's connect my meters negative to the zero volts out. Let's plug in again. So we should have positive voltage here, and we do. We've got about 17.2 volts. And we should have about negative 17 here. Yeah, that's looking really good. So, all we need to do now is stick a couple of 12 volt regulators on there and we'll have our power supply. So, we're going to use a 7812 and a 7912, and yes, I'm going to move all of this onto an actual board. Okay, well, I've started soldering the rest of the components on the board, and that's turning out pretty nicely. Although, now I am completely out of solder. And I think it's about time for a little bit of a rant. So I went to get some more solder, down to the local hardware store, searched one of them, couldn't find any solder anywhere. The other hardware store I had a look in, I did manage to find some, but this was about as much as I could find. It was either this, or plumbing solder. And I had to get lead-free solder because they don't sell leaded solder anywhere, so... Really, it shouldn't be this difficult to find solder. There's just no love left for electronic engineers. Next thing is, how the hell do you get this thing open? Is that it? Okay, I think we're about ready now. Well, here it is. The rectifier slash regulator board. 
with my very messy soldering on the other side. The question is, does it work? Well, let's see. Right, well, let's plug this in and see if it works. So, if we get 24 volts on the meter, because I've got it connected across the output of both regulators, well, no, this is working nice and good. And these two wires here are just grounds, so we won't bother with those right now. So, smoke test. 23.9 volts. That's pretty much right where we want it. Right, well, let's see what we get individually. So, we should have about positive 12 volts coming out of this wire. If I can get that to stay on now. 11.86, well, that's close enough. And we should have negative 12 volts on this wire. 12.06, so, yeah. Both are in the ballpark. So, it's time to put a heatsink on this thing. And I've got a nice little power supply for op amps and stuff like that. Well, I'd say our little power supply is just about done. Put a couple of heat sinks on the voltage regulators, which apparently I didn't put in very straight, but that's not really going to matter. Although I'm not quite done just yet. I have this little radio transmitter, which I also want to make a little power supply for. And that's so I can pipe audio through to this, which doesn't have any line input. Now, if the camera would stop swinging and bugging me about setting the white balance, here is the little, um, well, it's not actually a regulator circuit, but it's a, basically, it's a beefed up potentiometer and also a rectifier. And this is what's going to power the little FM transmitter. So, this is where the AC goes in, and it's going to connect to the transformer here and here. Because I measured the voltage outputs of this transformer. Between here and here we have about 30 volts. Here and here we have about 4.5. So that's where this is going. And this is where our DC comes out. Okay, let's see if this little thing works. I've got my meter hooked up. Camera's still bugging me to set the white balance. So everything's going to look a bit weird. But who cares? Let's plug this in and see what it does. Let's plug this in and see what it does. We shouldn't have anything right away. i start turning this little knob and the voltage should start increasing. There we go. Can we get to about 3.3 .3 volts? That would be uh, good. Let's just see how far we can go. Okay, here it goes up to about 4.1 volts, alright. Well, I'd say that's working. So, all we've got to do now is put this into, I don't know why I'm doing this, but put all this into an enclosure. This is a nice enough enclosure. I've got my guitar preamp. Fits in there like it was made for it. And also my microphone preamp fits inside the guitar preamp like it was made for it. Oh, let's go wire this lot up. Alright, I guess it's time to check that everything has survived. Now I've put it in this box. I grab my meter here. Let's just connect that up to the output of the two voltage regulators. If we get 24 volts, we'll know that's working just fine. Because it's across both the voltage regulators, not just one of them. Let's just give that a little test. Make sure we're good. Yep, we're about 24 volts, although I cannot really see it on the meter because of the glare. So, that's good. Unfortunately, we have had one little casualty here. The power supply for the FM transmitter, one of the wires, has broken off. Well, I'm not going to move the meter just in case the wire pops off again, but we got about 2.1 volts, so that's going to need to be adjusted, but we can do that. Well, I think it's about time to set the voltage for the little radio transmitter. 
Now I need to set it to about 3 volts because this originally was powered off two AAA batteries. So we want to get a similar voltage. Now the light's already on. We're already we're only at 0.6 volts, so let's turn that up to about 3 volts. Alright. That's looking good. So let's just unplug for the time being. And turn on a nearby FM radio. Alright. I'll plug this in and the radio should go silent. And yeah, that's working. I mean, obviously they're tuned to the same frequency, but... So, what exactly is this thing? Well, it's kind of a mishmash of different things, but... It's basically going to tidy up a lot of messy wires that I had, and I couldn't find this, and I couldn't find that, so that's what this is for. So, we've got my two power supplies that I made. The one, the op-amp power supply and the little FM transmitter's power supply with the FM transmitter right there. This is my microphone preamp and this is my guitar preamp. So this control sets the gain of the guitar preamp and this switch you might think is to turn it on and off. That's to actually turn distortion on and off and I will get into how that works in just a moment. And lastly, we've got a three-way split adapter thingy so I can connect my mixer's output here and I've got that output split three ways so I can connect that to three different devices. And, and it doesn't load down the mixer's output so there's no need for a buffer circuit. And this potentiometer here limits how much of that gets into the radio transmitter because this thing was designed for headphone level output and and line level output is, well, higher than that, so to prevent that from over-modulating just put a potentiometer between this and that and we're good. Well, okay, we've run into the first problem of the day and that's the radio transmitter is not working. Well, it's working, it is transmitting a signal, it's transmitting unmodulated carrier wave, but that's just what it is. No sounds, so I'm trying to figure out exactly where I've gone wrong here. Now I believe this blue wire is the actual antenna. And the white wire and the red wire help if I was showing it in the camera are the audio. So I'm just using my tablet as an audio source. And I'm having all kinds of problems with this. Sometimes it keeps stopping while I'm trying to use this as the audio source. I'm just playing a random YouTube video. One of E. Westlife's videos, I'm sure he won't mind. Let's just see if we get any modulation whatsoever when I connect the wires up. And we're not. Let's try the red one. Some Okay, well that's given us something. If I could just get that to stay on there. Sonic. Okay, so the red wire has definitely given us something. Let's see if the blue wire does anything. Maybe that's not the antenna. Large, nicely spaced. But the typing feel. Okay, so. That's some pretty loud audio coming through that, but the blue gave us audio through the left speaker and the right gave us audio through the right speaker, so... I take it that the white wire is actually the antenna. So I'll just have to wire this up correctly and hopefully it'll work. Well, fix the problem with the transmitter and now it's working perfectly. You probably cannot tell, but the sound out of both speakers as it should be. Computer's playing some music, which is going into the mixer and then into the thing. 
Well, everything is good here. Microphone preamp is working, as you can tell. Guitar amp works, so I think we're done for today. Well, just before we go over to the cartoon at the end of the video, let's just go over the schematics. So, this is the power supply, you know, the positive, negative, 12 volt power supply. You can see it's pretty simple. We've got a full bridge rectifier there, a couple of smoothing capacitors for positive and negative voltage, and then a positive and negative voltage regulator, a couple of other smoothing caps, and there you go. And this is the power supply for the little FM transmitter. Pretty simple, if you're wondering what that diode is for, that's to stop this capacitor from discharging through the variable resistor that sets the voltage. Again, pretty simple stuff, and um, this thing here is just a little thing I drew up. The little modifications I made to my guitar preamp to give it distorted sound. So we got our op amp here and the feedback, but you might have noticed that there's a couple of diodes here, and when this switch is closed, they're connected into the feedback circuit, and that's what creates the distorted sound. And it's not like, you know, suddenly squaring off the audio or anything like that. It's more like um, more like how a tube clips, you know, it's sort of a like a rounded off sort of clip, if you know what I mean. So it's not just suddenly slamming into a wall and then squaring off. It's, you know, gives a pretty good sound. Anyway, um, my mind is going now, so yeah. Until next time, goodbye. And now we're going to do my terrible YouTube failure. I wonder what I'll do today. I know, I'll go on YouTube and see how my videos are doing. It's been about two months since the last time I uploaded a video, so they're bound to have had some views by now. Let's see here, let's check out my latest video, see how many views it's got. Why does everybody on YouTube have such loud mouse buttons? Only two views? Over at Ricky's house. <laughs> What me do today? Oh, me no. Me make YouTube video. Uh, how me use computer? Come on. You use this. This too hard. Me use phone, cause me modern person, me good at phone. Mm, work. Oh, broke it. Don't matter. Got more phones to stole. Mm, oh, there it is, YouTube. Uh. Now me make uh, taste beer again. Now me make video. Hello YouTube. Uh, I think I'll just do that for the rest of the video. Back at Clem's house, I just don't know what I'm doing wrong. I mean, I plan the videos out well, I use a good camera, I use a good microphone, I edit the video to absolute perfection, and I get no views. Uh, maybe if I look at some of the trending stuff I'll be able to see what I'm doing wrong. Let's see here. Oh, what's this? Me going, uh, that's by Ricky. Ricky's on YouTube and is one of the top rated partners. Oh, this I gotta see. <laughs> what the hell is this? I think I'll just do that for the rest of the video.
the hell was that? Oh well, let's see how many views it got. I'm sure something this stupid that took absolutely no effort to make could get three million views. And it's only been up five minutes. I don't believe this. Oh well, let's have a look and see what the comments have to say. I'm sure they'll all agree with me on how stupid this was. Great video, Ricky. Best ten seconds of my life. Lol, cuzd. Ja, 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 ja. I don't believe this. They actually like it. Well, if that's all it takes to make a successful YouTube video, just putting no effort into it and making it as stupid as possible, I'm gonna make a Fred video because those are popular and those are stupid and those take no effort to make. So that's sure to get me tons of views. Right? Hello, it's me, Clem. And I'm really, really stupid. I'm talking with a sped up voice. Isn't this great? Isn't this all what you want to see? Don't you love this? Okay, so I've degraded myself and made a very lousy video. So let's see how it does. Two months later. Well, I've given it a couple of months, so let's see how it's doing. I'll just look at the view count and... Uh? It's actually negative. Oh well, I guess I'm just doomed to a life of low views.